Now to be recognized by a host to speak, you might want to use the raise hand option. Jackie, can you please show us how to raise a hand so our friends can see what it looks like? Good, thank you. And do you see that in the upper left hand corner, Jackie had raised her hand so that we know she wants to speak. Did you want to say something? No, just thanks for teaching us all of this. Of course. Now to raise our hand just as Jackie had done so that it's in our window instead, we're going to bring our hands down to that little smiley face where there's a plus sign that's called reactions. If I click on that, you see raised hand, as well as a couple other different reactions. So if I click the button raise hand right over there, then there you go. You see a hand also in my window. Now another way to contribute to conversation during a Zoom meeting is by using the chat box. By doing that, you're going to scroll down to the bottom or look at the bottom, I'm sorry, and see this little bubble right here, or maybe it's called a flag looking item. That bubble, it might have three dots in it, or it might just be a plain bubble like how it is for me, but it's all a chat box, just the same. Again, every computer might show a slightly different symbol, but you do see the words chat there, so that's how you know it's the right thing. We're gonna click on chat, and now you see that the chat has shown up on my right hand side. Elizabeth, can you please type in something so we can see? Hi, everyone. And I'm going to send a message back to her. Okay. So that's what it looks like when you have a chat. I'm going to show you. Sometimes it's here on the right-hand side. That's how I do prefer it but sometimes it might be popped out on top of all the videos as you see right now. This is called pop out and it kind of floats around everyone's face. Again, it's up to everyone's preference, but my preference is that it goes onto the right hand side of my um, Zoom call. So I'm gonna click on these three dots right here, which is usually a settings button and merge it back to my meeting window and you see that it shut right back to the right side again. Now, if you do wanna to type to people in the chat room, we're going to make sure that we hit the enter button or the return button. If I say something like, how are you all doing today? No one can see what I typed yet because it's still down here in my drafts. It's not until I hit return or enter that it shoots right up into the chat and now everybody can see it. Okay, let's close the chat box by going to the same section as we popped it out and hitting close. Oh wow, it looks like they're still chatting. Let's open up the box. How did I know that they're still chatting? When I put my eyes down over that chat flag or bubble, I see a number in a red box. That number tells me how many messages have been typed in since we last looked at it. So I'm gonna click it again to open it up. <laughs> Elizabeth, you're silly. And Jackie, I'm glad you're having fun too because I certainly am. I'm glad that everyone is also having fun typing in the chat room with each other. You do have an option, by the way, to talk individually to one person. Now I'll show you how to do that. When you scroll to the bottom here and you see the button that says everyone, we're going to click on that. And now I see all the different names of the participants who are in the chat room. I'm going to click on Colleen's name and you see direct message in red pop up next to that. That's how I know it's an individual chat to just her. Let's ask her if she is, why she's having her camera off.
<laughs> just as I thought, Colleen's uh, not wanting to turn her camera on. And so it's okay that you can have one-on-one -on -one chats with other people, but please remember that anytime you chat with anyone on these individual one-on-one -on -one sessions, it might be just the two of you right now during the call, but the host has all capabilities to download the transcript afterwards and view what you had written. So maybe I'm reminding you right now to avoid any remarks you don't want other people to see. Now, if I want everyone to see my messages again and not just be to Colleen, I'm gonna bring my eyes right back down here, click on Colleen's name, and go back to everyone. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna close this chat box. And I think that I am so happy to see you all, but I probably should show my friends how to leave a Zoom meeting. It's been lovely seeing your faces and thank you so much for helping us figure out how to, what all the icons and buttons can do on Zoom. And thank you so much, Colleen, even though you're not on video, to, for setting up this invitation. Now, to leave a meeting, you're gonna bring your eyes right down here to the right hand side of the window. Do you see the red button where it says leave? We're gonna click on that and they always have a double confirmation so that you don't have to worry about accidentally clicking it in the middle of a call. When I click that button, another little window pops up that wants you to confirm you're leaving that meeting. So if I click on that, I'm not gonna see my friends anymore. So bye everyone. Bye. Bye bye. And the Zoom window shrinks or closes. Sometimes if the host ends the meeting before you have a chance to click on the red words, you'll see your Zoom window shrink or close. I'm so glad you joined me here today to learn about Zoom. I enjoyed seeing Jackie and Elizabeth through Colleen's invitation. And I hope that you might feel a little bit more comfortable with the terms, icons, and features of the screen. And if you're wondering just how safe Zoom is, know that they recently bolstered their security featuring encryption and the promise of increased protections against tampering. The best things our host can do is to set up a waiting room like Colleen did and allow the participants in one by one. Did I introduce you to anything new today? Hopefully my demonstration helped you hone in on any features you didn't know about before. Zoom has so many features that we didn't go over today actually, like hosting a meeting, sharing your screen for a presentation, or changing the background so that you can have a little fun with it. Maybe you can pretend you're on stage in a movie theater, or maybe you're a bunny rabbit, or maybe you have a handlebar mustache. You can play with these settings in the preferences window that you saw when we tested our speakers and microphone. I hope you'll use the tips we provided here today to accept a Zoom meeting from a friend and give it a try on your own. And once you do, if you have any questions about how Zoom works on your individual device, we can help you with that too. We are partnering with Teaneck Public Library and the Forum at Teaneck Public Schools to train and enlist teenagers in Teaneck to serve as your digital technology tutors. These teens can work one-on-one -on -one with you over the phone to help with a specific skill. An example of the kinds of things they can help you with. Now, let's say you wanna use Zoom on your smartphone or tablet. Today we showed you how to use it on your computer. We can have them help you by first downloading an app, short for application, on that smartphone or tablet. Our tutors will walk you through the steps in doing so. And if you're interested, call the phone number that we're gonna have at the end of this episode and we'll get you signed right up for a tutoring session. Thank you so much for connecting with me here today. I look forward to helping you navigate new digital doors. 
I'm EJ Busy, and I wish you well. Bye now.